This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Although the emperor came of age in 1887, he had to wait two more years before taking over government from Senshi, who continued to influence policy. Enough is enough at age 27. He finally tried to assert himself. So this guy was kind of just a, an emperor by image, but the real power was from some shit. So by 27, he decided enough of this. So he made a move uh, to assert himself. During what came to be known as the 100 Days of Reform, he collected a group of progressively oriented officials around him and issued a broad series of reform edicts. Once the officials were outraged, With the aid of the top imperial military commander, Rong Lu, since she returned to the capital. So, since she didn't take this report, this news well, that the young emperor was beginning to take control. So, with the aid of the imperial military commander, Rong Lu, since she returned to the capital. Confined the emperor to his palace and spread rumors that he was dead ill. So, since she has come to the palace and has confined the emperor to the palace and gave out the news that the emperor is deadly ill. So, foreign powers will have been known that they would not take kindly the emperor's death or the thronement save this life. So there are foreign powers who do not like um, the idea of uh, throning the emperor. So they made it known that let nothing happen to the emperor or hell, all the hell will break loose. So they saved his life, but thereafter, he had no power over government. Seems she was quite in control. On November 15, 1908, she died. And under highly suspicious circumstances, the healthy Kongshu Emperor too was announced, was announced as having died the previous day. So, we are now in 1908. Sung Shi has died. Sung Shi has died. And shortly before, shortly after Sung Shi dies, the death of Wang Shu is being announced that he had died the previous day. And surprisingly, Sung Shi final decree passed the throne to who? To Puyi, the emperor's three year old nephew. So we have Kung Shu, and Kung Shu was a nephew. So Si Shi has passed the, the empire to the three-year-old nephew of the emperor called Pi. Pi Yi, Chinese, I tell you, who reigned as the Guangdong, Shuangdong Emperor. So from the beginning, it was widely believed that the emperor 
had been poisoned. But there were no evidence to support this. Until a century after his death, hey, we now start to realize uh, Wang Shu might have been uh, poisoned. So a century later, in 2008, following a five-year study, a report was issued by Chinese researchers. So, 100 years later, in 2008, a research is being done, and a report was being is being issued is is being issued by Chinese government. And police official confirming that the emperor Wang Shu had been uh, deliberately poisoned with what? With arsenic. Remember arsenic? Our deadly poison. Although the report not address uh, who may have uh, ordered this murder, there is a suspicion that it was Wang Shu. Who did this? Of course, uh, he kind of added Kuang Shu. So, what was the moral lesson of this story? Okay, being a leader is quite dangerous. And it also sucks sometimes. And even a leader can be exploited. And also, a sunny kills. That's what is important to us, as in the case. But how? So our chemical as in the kills. How? Cisco Educational Premium is a section of Cisco Educationals with content that is not hosted here. There are episodes ranging from long to short videos. Remember those good old shots of ours? They are there. So do we get there? Use the link on screen or in the description or in the pinned comment below. Enjoy yourself. And I will see you in the next episode of Cisco Educationals. Yeah.